with brand marketing, I mean, your key objectives would be like brand awareness and, um, you know, building a bridge between customers. Hello and welcome to the guest segment of the Breakfast Connect on Africa Business Radio. I am Chicken on Somodi. On today's show, we are discussing the dynamics of growth marketing. What makes it different? What makes it unique? Joining us to have this conversation is someone who has worked in marketing for three years with achievements in working with cross-functional teams to achieve marketing and brand development goals. She's a growth marketer for tech companies and the founder of the Tech Marketers Hub. She is the beautiful Fermi Okafor. Welcome, Fermi. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Nasa. Interesting name, though, Fermi Okafor. Hmm. I get this all the time. I have mixed parents. Okay. Uh, my mom's Yoruba, my dad's Igbo. So. Mm, nice. So, yeah, the true definition of Nigerian unity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about you. How did you get into the growth marketing space and how has it been so far for you? Okay, so I've worked in marketing for three years. I think for most people who started out in marketing, it was probably from community management, mm. social media management. I started out the same way as well. For I would say that in so many ways, I've always worked in marketing. Okay. I did a bit of influencer marketing, then I started doing brand marketing for brands, that type of thing. And then I started doing some freelance gigs. And then I was doing social media management, community mm. management. All that. <laughs> yeah, so to say. So yeah, but I did get an in tech space. I've been there for about a year. Okay. Over a year now. So Okay. How's the tech space, by the way? How's it? Is it different from of course it's different, but then with growth marketing, how has it been for you? I would say that I'm enjoying it. Work wise, it's more flexible. Okay. Um, than a lot more on industries I mean I feel more comfortable there's a lot to learn mm. and I like places where there's challenges so I mean I'm a marketer and I am learning how to code so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do a bit of front end code right now nice. on the side so yeah so I'm always trying to like improve myself and get better at what I do so there's mm. like so much to learn like it's, so it's a lot yeah you like challenges nice mm-hmm. so now let's go into growth marketing for those who don't know what is growth marketing exactly what does it entail and then most importantly what makes it different or unique from other forms of marketing okay so with growth marketing it's i would say it's a fairly new field okay. but in depth uh, a short definition would be that it's a data-driven and revenue maximization type of marketing. Like okay. it's very data reliant because with brand marketing, I mean, your key objectives would be like brand awareness and, you know, building a bridge between customers. My personal definition would mm-hmm. be building a bridge between the product and the customer. Okay. But with growth marketing, there's, there's a series of experimentation. A lot of people would say growth hacking, but um, mm-hmm. I think... I don't really like to use that word mm, because it can it. be misinterpreted as a one-way field. And that's not it. There's a lot of experimentation that goes on. You document, you try out new things. You have to really think outside the box half of the time. And so, I mean, with content marketing, you can say it's a bit straightforward. With brand marketing, it's a bit straightforward. But with growth, you're trying out different tools. You're trying out different methodologies at the same time. But it's very data reliant and it's very result driven. Mm-hmm. So it's it's all about the numbers, all about the data and all of that. So you, you said growth hacking. So you're telling me, you know, when they say hacks, it means an easier way to do it. But in growth marketing, growth hacking doesn't mean an easier form of doing it. So I know a lot of people always say growth hacking. It's just a personal philosophy, man. I don't really subscribe to hacks okay because i feel this it's a series of like methodological routes that you have to take Mm. to get to like um what your target is at the time Mm -hmm. so when you say hacks it just seems like there's already like a map Mm -hmm. like there's a quick there's a quick solution Mm -hmm. to that and it's it's really not always the case Mm -hmm. because i mean you're trying out new things you are experimenting like half of the time. Like mm-hmm. you want to try out the campaign. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. If this doesn't work, okay, no problem. If this works, okay, we'll double down on this effort. That mm-hmm. type of thing. Okay, all right. So let's go into what makes a growth marketer. What 
uh, the steps to follow, what are the things you need to do to become a growth marketer? I mean, if you are looking to get into the space, I think it really it almost embodies all forms of marketing to an, to an extent. But uh, what I'd say is that you should have a very solid foundation in digital marketing, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Okay. You have to have a very solid foundation because digital marketing encompasses things like content marketing, email marketing, SEO, SEM. Oh, for those who don't understand, search engine optimization, okay. search engine marketing. So things like that, knowledge of those tools, very, very important. You would also want to have knowledge of data analytics and data research. You would also want to have some UX and copywriting skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's so... It, well, it's a lot, but I mean, I don't think there's everyone that has it all figured out. Mm, true. But okay. um, you should still have some solid foundation in like, the cause of these things. Okay. Now, I, I see that there are concepts like target persona and behavioral psychology in growth to marketing. Mm-hmm. Please explain them and why are they important in the space Okay, so a target persona is basically a fictional person Mm. or a fictional character that is developed based on market research. So if you were to build a target persona or like a sample target persona for a brand, it would come from things like finding out um, location, age, what their day-to-day looks like, Mm -hmm. things like their language, behavioral patterns, what motivates them, what are their pain points, Mm-hmm. And that way you're able to build on that. Okay. And it also helps with segmentation because okay. you can have, let me say, a fintech brand, for instance. The priorities of a 20-year-old and the priorities of a 40-year-old will be totally different. I mean, you're 40, yeah. you most likely would have kids. Mm-hmm. So it's a different ball game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you're creating target personas based off that. So, I mean, a brand like a fintech brand, for instance, would probably have products that are tailored specifically to like students mm, yeah. things like that and you have products that tailor specifically to people like middle aged and all of that so when you create these target personas that's when you're able to now make these decisions mm, okay all right then for behavioral psychology behavioral psychology is very important in growth marketing because it's essentially why people make decisions what motivates them why they act the way that they do and like I said, it's very data driven mm. if you work in growth marketing. So it's very important that you know these things. With behavioral psychology, it's very important in marketing because you have things like FOMO. So these are like tricks that we use. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the fear of missing out. You have like scarcity techniques. Mm, fear of missing out. Yeah. So you have things like scarcity techniques. What else? Yeah. Choice paralysis, mm-hmm. which would be when a customer feels overwhelmed because there are so many options. So, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that's something that people like um, ignore because typically you would expect that when you give them so many options, they have a lot. But you don't realize that what you've done is you've successfully confused Confusing. them. Yeah. And so you're not going to get the, the results that you need. Mm. It's just like if you go to um, a, a buffet now and you have food from everywhere. There's some people who would like that, right? But there's a lot of people who'll be overwhelmed. They're not sure whether to eat intercontinental. They're not sure whether oh, yeah. to eat like Nigerian yeah. food and whatnot. But if you structure down your menu to say just five types of cuisines, so now you have successfully like reduced taking that burden off them. Mm-hmm. But imagine having like 24 <laughs> products. It's a, lot. it's a lot. And it can overwhelm them. So these are um, terms that we use. These are things that we consider mm-hmm. um, while driving marketing campaigns. So, okay, really interesting terms. That means as if you want to thrive in that space, you have to also learn psychology. That's what you're saying. At least have an idea of psychology. Oh, I wouldn't say learn psychology. Like you don't need to go get a degree, <laughs> right? so to yeah. say. But then you do have to be very aware mm. of. The fact that people are very different and okay. you have to be very appreciative of that because I think one of the things I always say is that one of my favorite things to do is have conversations with people. Mm. I mean, when I got here, I was asking you about yourself yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. I'm able to, from our little like conversation, I'm able to say, okay, I, this is the type of person that she is, mm-hmm. you know, that type of thing. So with conversation, you're able to even get like organic, organic data from that and yeah. be able to conduct market research, okay. that type of thing. Okay. All right. Now, Let's talk about your theory of rules. What do you apply when you want to help a company implement growth marketing? 
So with growth strategy, my first step with any brand or any company that I work with would be to find out who their users are. Okay. So uh, coming back to data again. Again. Uh, exactly. So it's to find out who the users are, to study how they act, what motivates them, what makes them make the decisions that they make. I have primarily worked mostly in the fintech space. So if you work in fintech, you would really do a lot of segmentation when it comes to customers Mm -hmm. because there's everybody deals with money from like childhood till you die. So you meet a lot of people. You bring in the behavioral psychology thing again as well. You have to really focus on that. Then you obviously would want to now drive um, conversions, (laughs) drive campaigns based off that. So another thing to also look into is, is it a B2C company? Is it a B2B company? B2C is business to customer. Okay. Um, B2B is business to business. Okay. I currently work in a B2B to C company. So, so yeah, yeah, the two of them. It can be, yeah, exactly. So that's like almost every marketer's nightmare (laughs) to mix the two. Because, I mean, you are catering to businesses and in turn catering to the customers of those businesses, just B2B to C. So, because strategies for that, between B2C and B2B, they vary. They're not the same. So, some things are similar, some things are standard, like, I mean, the campaigns that you run on social media, whatnot. But in relating to businesses and customers, it's way different. So, the strategies for that would be different, even with emails. The emails that we send out to customers will probably do like A-B testing, things mm-hmm. like that. The emails we send to customers are way different from the emails we send to businesses. I mean, for businesses, you want to probably do things like demo, mm-hmm. whatnot. For customers, you want to do a lot of storytelling campaigns, explain to them why your product is good, you know, what they can get out of it. Um, really focus on like the pain points of the customers and okay. whatnot. So yeah, it always really varies, but at the core of everything, like before you start anything, it always has to start with who the customers are, are and like what motivates them. Why are they doing what they do? Um, what type of people are they? Yeah. So Okay. Now you, you brought up something about email marketing and I want to divert a little. How effective is it? Because some people would tell me, or recently I had a talk with someone that is a digital marketer and she spoke about how email marketing is a really good tool. But I have not seen that myself. I have not seen how because I feel people use more of WhatsApp and the rest and they even look at their mails. Checking my mail, you see like 200, myself 300 unanswered. I've not opened them. Mm-hmm. So how effective is email marketing or rather how effective is sending mails to your customers? Okay, so I can't really give like a percentage because okay. I always like to be very sure. Mm-hmm. But then it's a very effective tool, especially if you work in B two B. Okay, it's a very effective tool because you have the opportunity to get personal with your customers. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're on social media, you're probably doing like generic messages, mm, um, yeah. generic campaigns, and whatnot. But when you generate leads and then you now you now have them on your mailing list, it's it's an avenue for a lot of things to happen. I mean, mm-hmm. I speak a lot about A-B testing. Um, A-B testing would be a very brief way to explain what A-B testing is. Would be, for instance, I might want to send out a mail Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I might send a certain type of subject header. Okay. And team A gets a different one and team B gets a different, different. one. Mm-hmm. I'm able to now understand... So from the open rate, I'm able to understand which one customers respond to, what type of tone they respond to, things like that. Okay. But email marketing really is a very solid tool. It's a very, I wouldn't call it a tool, it's a channel. Mm-hmm. It's a very solid channel for marketing. And I don't think if you're not doing email marketing in your company, I think you should. Because <laughs> if all else, fails, if everything else fails, I mean, email won't. Email won't. So, <laughs> right. Okay, for growth markets in our businesses, how, I mean, I know you've mentioned part, but how exactly is it important for business success? What are its benefits exactly? Okay, so with businesses or companies, let me just first start by saying every marketing team now is now very focused on growth. Mm. I mean, you know, you have the normal things like customer acquisition, retention, and whatnot. Like you have, it depends on different companies. You have growth marketers have different job descriptions for different job companies. But then with growth marketing, based off the efforts, it has better results. Mm. And so 
it's not something that you feel like you're wasting money on okay. because these are things that you try out. Mm-hmm. And we are working in a very saturated world now. Yeah. There's a lot of fintechs. There's a lot of B2B so companies. Many. There's so many companies who are doing a lot of similar things. And everyone is almost using the same strategies and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, But with growth, it's not boxed up. You're trying new things, mm-hmm. you're experiencing new things, your documents. World, yeah. Exactly. So it opens you up to like a lot more opportunities. It also opens you up to a lot more strategies that people haven't really even thought of. Mm-hmm. Again, a lot of people talk about marketing and say it's about who copies best. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that, that statement always makes me laugh because, I mean, I understand that a lot of people are doing similar things. Mm, but yeah. then in some ways, it's actually very true. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of food. So it's, it's who everybody will have done it but it's who does it best, best yes. I think that's the best way to describe it but yes. if you don't have a group market on your team it's very important that you do because it would give you the appropriate resource you're looking for okay. I mean content marketing is great especially for retention brand marketing is great for brand awareness and whatnot. you need SEO you need all these people but I mean, with group marketers, a lot of them already have like the tools of these people. I'm not saying yes, you should hire one. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I'm not saying that you should hire one person to do the job of five people. Okay. But then, like, you're hiring someone who has knowledge of a lot of all these skills. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, in your opinion, would you say people have recognized growth marketing as a career? More people now know about it. It's now spread wide. Okay, so I guess I started earlier and I said that growth marketing is a fairly new space. Mm, yeah. But it has existed for years, though. It's just been very, like, low-key. Mm-hmm. But now, it's very in demand. It's very, like, high, like, on the scale, like, mm-hmm. marketers. You see a lot of head of growth. <laughs> mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you see a lot of marketing teams doing call themselves marketing. Again, they call themselves growth because it's, it's not just about marketing. It's not just about putting yourself there. It's about the um, little efforts all combined together to drive growth Mm -hmm. and so yes it's becoming a very in-demand career path for a lot of people i see a lot of people now updating their bios and putting growth markets and i'm like yes okay (laughs) yeah okay that's very good because i mean for myself i did update my bio too so Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah so it's definitely very in demand and um trying the tech space there's a lot of opportunities for poly marketing yeah Okay, for growth marketing, now one important question. You know, how Nigerians, or should I say the world, we always believe that you have to go to school. I'm not saying school is not good, but for growth marketing, do you necessarily have to go to school, get a degree, and come out and say, okay, I'm a growth marketer? Or you can still learn by the side. I'll say this for anything that you would want to learn. I mean, like, if it's medicine, please go to school. <laughs> please don't <laughs> kill someone. But um, if it's, I mean, marketing, it's. I would always say yes. Very, it's very important for you to get an education. Okay. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of effort or money. It's very important. But um, you can learn certain skills. I mean, there's a lot of academies, a lot of um, places to take courses mm. from Coursera to Google to Trefford. There's a lot of, to see Excel, mm-hmm. which is one of the best ones yeah. anyways, Udacity. There's a lot of places you can learn. So if you're not on that career path right now and you want to switch, you don't necessarily need to go to school again to or go and study that formally. You can learn these things online and, you know, seek for internships, get like real life, you know, projects and experiences and whatnot. So there's nothing that you can learn. I mean, I don't think they teach that as a degree yet, so... There are a lot of places to learn from, like online. There's a lot of resources out there that you can learn from. You can start by, you know, making sure that you have like a solid background in digital mm-hmm. marketing. That really helps a lot. That really goes a long way. Okay. And then there's a lot of growth marketing courses on CXL if you're looking to start on that. So, yeah. Okay. So let's talk challenges now. I mean, with everything that has benefits sometimes or most times it has challenges. Mm-hmm. What are the challenges in growth marketing? What are the challenges you have faced in growth marketing? And how have you been able to solve them? Okay, so with challenges or bottlenecks, mm-hmm. for me, basically, I don't think I really faced like any serious challenges. Mm. Oh, you, you said you like challenges. So, I mean... I don't. Yeah, but like I'm not, I don't think I've 
face anything as like really being daunting. Okay. But um, what I know that a lot of people always um, talk about is um, getting access to proper data. Okay. Um, because as much as you have data knowledge, you can never be as good as data analysts. Like that's their job. Mm -hmm. So it's always. But I've been very lucky. Um, all places I've worked at, I have worked with okay. data analysts, so okay. I didn't really have to have that budding yeah. on me, so to say. So, yeah, but challenges would be if you need to brush up on some certain areas. But I think things have become really, I won't say easier now, but you have access to ask questions mm -hmm. and seek for help if you need. I mean, I'm always open to answer questions from anybody that's exactly why i started the hub so okay. that nobody feels alone on their journey if you're just starting out and for those who are already in the space it's a good place for them to also find people like them in the space and also give people who are just starting out mentorship opportunities so it's basically it just connects you know the young and the old mm. that type of thing okay that's so. a, that's a great initiative tech marketers hub <laughs> thank that's you a really nice one and you just started it when November. November. Yeah. <laughs> it has grown to how many? We're almost at 350. 350 community members. It started members. With this month and three. Yeah, truly gross marketing. <laughs> I, I, I told you on <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. That's really nice. Well, I mean, with that, I'm sure that means reception it has been amazing. Fact. Yeah, it's actually been very amazing. We're launching a, the Mentor and Marketer um, scheme. Okay. So to say. Um, yeah, next week. So we already have uh, mentors who have submitted applications and mentees as well. So what we're currently doing is like the matching process mm -hmm. um, because you have mentors from different branches of marketing. So we want to make sure that everybody gets who would be able to help them out. So mm -hmm. if you want to learn SEO, I would want to match you with someone who is experienced in SEO. That type of thing. Okay, for someone who wants to join your tech marketers hub, how can they um, do that? I mean, you can just tweet at me, send okay. me a DM, no problem. The links are all over my Twitter, so it's very easy. Please, your Twitter handle for our listener that wants to join the tech marketers hub. My name is Ferrum Yokafo. Okay. I don't have anything fancy. <laughs> it's just Ferrum Yokafo everywhere. Right, all right, okay. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me, for me. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, I really hope that people will take the step to try to join. Mm -hmm. um, even if you don't get into like gross marketing per se, I mean, marketing, especially in tech, it, it's blooming mm. right now. So it's a great time to learn. It's a great time to get better and whatnot. And I mean, I'm really looking forward to like the future of what growth will look like in mm -hmm. the next like five years. I mean, like five years ago, which only like a few people. And like now, and I'm seeing like you like this like this bust. So mm. imagine what it look like in like the next five years. So I don't know if I should do like a little TLDR for people who are listening, <laughs> uh, which would be like a summary of everything mm -hmm. I have said. Okay, um, you can. Growth marketing is very data based. It's about revenue maximization. Mm -hmm. Target personas are fictional personas. That's your ideal client or your ideal user or customer. Behavioral psychology is basically understanding why people are people, mm -hmm. how they act, why they do the things that they do. If you're trying to create target personas, you want to do things like audience research. So you do grouping based on age, location, whatnot. You would also identify their pain points mm -hmm. and then you're able to not create these personas. Then what else? First rules, if you're going to implement a growth strategy, would be to find out who their users are what motivates them, okay. the data behind the users, basically. Then, under behavioral psychology, you have things like FOMO, social proof. Social proof is, this is actually very funny, because it happens to everybody. If you trust someone, and that person buys someone, buys something from another person, mm -hmm. the chances are that you're going to buy the same thing, too. Mm. And yeah. so, and that's why you have things like influencers. Yeah. This is one of the things that we do, where we have influencers post stuff, and you see people go and buy stuff, it's because they trust that if this person buys something from the other person, then that means he has to be legit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's just it's actually just psychology yeah, and everything. And that's and that's what we capitalize on. Scarcity techniques is when I know a lot of you might see where you go on websites where you want to show up and you see things like limited edition. Yeah. Nothing. Or you see things like twenty five left. 
so in your mind you're like oh my god it's going to sell out so, they probably have like a hundred back then you keep yeah. coming back you don't know yeah. it's one of the things that we do don't worry yes. <laughs> <laughs> so things like that so just be very intentional about the things that you do when it comes to like campaigns mm-hmm. and marketing and just study how people act okay. um, one of the best ways for me is having conversations with people I like to talk to people I like to find out who they are what they like to do what their hobbies are that way I'm able to identify what exactly like what I won't say box but yeah what box to put you in when it comes okay. to types of people okay so yeah I mean if you're trying to get into the space I mean I'm rooting for you mm. very excited you go you go girl and boy <laughs> Your your passion. I mean, you're selling me already on this group marketing. I might. Yeah, mm. I I really love pots. I really love marketing. It's one thing that I mean, I'm very very passionate about. I mean, I left law <laughs> to for marketing. Yeah, and it's something I'm very very passionate about. So I would everything about it is like probably like marketing and content by this time. So. Go on, you can do it. Okay, that was Faramir Yoka for Growth Marketer and the founder of the Tech Marketers Hub. Stay tuned for more.